I asked myself whether I was afraid. Not of death, I told myself, but of being afraid, yes, most horribly. He was most horribly afraid, not of death or being wounded. He was afraid of being afraid. afraid, This first experience in no man's land did away with my last flabby fear. That if I was afraid, I would show it. One is often afraid. Any soldier who asserts the contrary may not be a liar, but he certainly does not speak the truth. Physical fear is too deeply rooted to be overcome by any amount of training. It remains. Then to train a man in spiritual pride. So that when he fears, nobody knows it. Cowardice is contagious. It has been said that no battalion is braver than its least brave member. Military courage, therefore, is a form of unselfishness. Courage is a form of unselfishness. It is practiced that it may save the weaker men's lives and uphold their honor. The worst thing you can say of a man out on the front is he doesn't play the game. That doesn't of necessity mean he fails to do his duty. Listen to this. That doesn't mean he fails to do his duty. What it means is that he fails to do a bit more than his duty. Mm. When a man plays the game, he does things which it requires a braver man than himself to accomplish. He never knows when he's done. He acknowledges no limit to his cheerfulness and strength. Whatever his rank, he holds his life less valuable than that of the humblest. He laughs at danger, not because he does not dread it, but because he has learnt that there are ailments more terrible and less curable than death. ailments more terrible and less curable than death and that ailment is cowardice until I became a part of the war I was a doubter of the nobility in others and a skeptic as regards to myself the growth of my personal vision was complete when I recognized that the capacity of heroism is latent in everybody and only awaits the bigness of the opportunity to call it out. Different take. Different take. And and obviously, you know, uh, we've talked about World War One. And unless, I mean, obviously, he's not the only person that felt this way about things. And if he, if this wasn't at least a a fairly normal attitude to have there's no way that world war one could have continued on the way it did Mm -hmm. because people would have been saying no this is ridiculous Mm -hmm. ridiculous we just lost another 80,000 casualties we lost another hundred these these are battles where tens of thousands of people were casualties in one day in two days so if people didn't have this kind of attitude that this was their duty they wouldn't have been able to maintain that type of that type of pace and I don't even know whether to say I'm impressed by that or disgusted by it or disturbed not disgusted but disturbed by it Mm -hmm. disturbed by it and I I say all the time you know this is the war that I I would not want to fight in wouldn't want to fight in it because this is the attitude is okay your duty is to go get killed when we call. And it doesn't matter how good, I say this all the time, it doesn't matter how good your tactics are, it doesn't matter how good of a shooter you are, it doesn't matter how good of a leader you are, because when we say go, you're gonna get your troops, you're gonna do what we say, you're gonna go over the top and you're gonna charge the machine guns. And guys are gonna get mowed down. 